Today we'll show you how to repair a solenoid for a starter and this one comes from a Toyota Corolla model 2008. Almost all Toyota cars use this kind of solenoid. I've seen some other people repair solenoid from other cars but they are different models and they are easy to remove in which you just have to remove a couple of screws and you can pull this assembly out. This one is different. It is crimped onto the plastic by the metal case here and uh, you cannot remove it out and it is supposedly non-serviceable or is it? So what I did is I used my angle grinder and cut out the part where it's crimped. I also cut it out right here, right here and right here. So now I can easily just pry it out like that. Next step is to remove this out of the metal casing. Got two screws holes on the bottom here and this is the part where it's connected to the starter itself. And this is the screw that goes in here and I'm just going to use this to push it out. A little bit at a time on each side. You can see it's slowly coming out. And it's so light now I can screw it with my finger. Let's see it'll come out. There we go. You got another piece of metal that comes from the bottom up. And then this is welded to that piece of metal. So we're gonna have to pry it off before we can remove the top cover. Alright, so I broke it loose. So later on when I put it back together, I have to find a way to connect this to that. Now we can pull the whole top part out. There we go. So here's the inside of the solenoid. So basically, solenoid is just a glorified name of a relay. And the way this works is that when you turn on the ignition, uh, it will connect to this terminal here and it will energize the coil. And that will create a magnetic field and that will push down on this uh, copper contact here and it will contact the two copper terminal together and these two will be connected together and that will be connected to the starter next to it and that will turn on the starter. You can see over time this contact is worn out and you look at the other side of the contact it's all brand new and it's clean. So what I can do is I can just flip this over and uh, I can use the uh, the other side which is brand new to make a new contact for this piece of copper here. This metal contact is held together by this metal ring here. So I have to find a way to pry that off. And so what you do is you just push it down with one hand and use the plier Peel it off. The uh, retaining ring is made of aluminum, therefore it's, it's pretty easy to break off and use a clamp and just clamp it down on uh, both sides and then eventually it will be weak enough. So now we can just peel it off. came out just like that. Now we can remove this whole assembly out. So here it is, completely worn on one side and brand new on the other side. Now I need to put back everything together and um, I need a retaining ring 
for that because I already destroyed the original one. I have this retaining ring as salvage from a laser printer and there are a lot of these in the laser printer and uh, it would fit in here just fine like that. So if I push it in here and uh, it will fit in here just fine. But I want something more secure because uh, this uh, might come loose. I'm going to use a piece of aluminum which has the same thickness as the groove. And I cut out a small piece and I drill a hole at the center. And it will go in here like that. And then I'm going to crimp it right on the groove so we turn everything together. And let's put it back together. The spring goes in first. And then this, and then this. So I have to make sure that the good side is facing up. And then another washer. And then my uh, aluminum ring. I'm gonna push it down. And uh, at the same time, put in the aluminum ring. There, you hear a click, it's in. Now I just need to compress it. My pair of pliers just compress right into the groove. There. Here we go. This is beautiful. Holds on just fine. Next step is to turn these contacts around. And you can see it's only worn on one half of the circle. The other half is still brand new. Same here on this side. And on the other side we have a washer. It's actually a nut to hold this contact together. I already turned it a little bit, a few rounds. You can see it's a little bit loose now. So I just have to uh, turn it and uh, remove this washer. There. Now I can turn it around. 180 degrees and uh, put this right back. There we go. Brand new. I did the same for this side. Now I have two brand new surfaces. Now we just need to put everything back together. This spring is going to go in here. Just like that. Now we put this back in. Like that. Alright, it's time to put it back on. Because I already cut out part of the case, now I don't have a way to uh, crimp it onto the plastic. So I drill some holes on the metal case and I also drill holes on the plastic. And uh, I tap it to make some threads. Now I can use a screw to uh, secure everything together. I messed up on one corner, I cracked the plastic. Now I can't put a screw on that, so I cut a groove just like it here. So that when I put on the plastic, I can crimp the metal onto the groove to hold it in place. I'm using my visor to clamp everything in place. And now I can just screw it in. All right, we are done. I got a screw mounted here, one screw mounted here. I crimped the case here and here. And it's pretty tight. It's not going anywhere. This connection here, I have to solder because uh, I don't have spot welder. This is just for powering the coil inside, so it's not a high current wire. So soldering like this should be fine. Now we just need to put it back together got another spring here which goes inside this one goes in there 
And this one, so it's gonna hook on to a piece of metal in there. Okay, so it's like this. Push it down and put the screw through here. And then the screw on the other side. And it looks like that. On the top here, this wire goes in here. You are not. All right, I've got everything back together. Before we hook this up to the car, let's do a bench test. First, make sure at least that it works. So I've got my 12 volt battery here. The negative terminal of the battery goes to the case. The positive go to this big terminal here. And then uh, we just need to connect between this main terminal to this little terminal here and uh, it will turn on the unit and I have my two yellow wires here so if I touch the two yellow wires it will turn on you ready it's gonna spark that is pretty cool isn't it and that's all for now thanks for watching and I will see you next time